Bamboo Lab just dropped the brand new P2S, and it's the refresh we were waiting for. My name's Jim, and this is the Edge of Tech. This is the brand new Bamboo Lab P2S. It's an upgraded refresh P1S, and it's about time. So today, let's take a look at what makes this different and how I feel about it after almost 200 hours of printing. So like its older brother, the P1S, the P2S is a fully enclosed printer with a metal frame, plastic shell, and a glass door and glass top. Pretty much what you can expect out of a brand new Bamboo Lab printer these days, and that's how it came. Unlike the little tiny touch analog screen on the P1S, this one actually gets a five inch touch screen driven by an upgraded, more powerful processor and their second generation UI. This is just a much better experience as we've seen in the H2S and the H2D. It's just way better than what the P1S and the P1P had in the beginning. This is a much welcome upgrade. I'm actually super glad they went to the touchscreen on the P2S being a budget printer. That's, that's huge. If we look inside, we'll actually see that the hot end has been upgraded as well. I believe it's the same hot end that they use on the H2S, and it uses a high current eddy sensor to measure the nozzle's pressure and actively adjust the flow of the filament. It also has the PMSM servo extruder, uh, so it's a different type of extruder that can push with a maximum force of eight and a half kilograms for high speed printing. And it, and it actually detects grinding and clogs and stuff like that in real time. I do have to say that I like the hot end a lot uh, in both this and my H2S, it really prints very good. And as you can see, and we'll show you a little bit later, all of these prints came out really good in really it just, it's a very solid hot end. It performs really well and uh, you know, servo power, right? Servo power. <laughs> Next on the upgrade list is the camera inside. Finally, the P series has a camera we can actually use. It looks so much better than the P1P and, and the P1S did. Uh, and if you haven't noticed yet, the lighting inside, it's a bright studio in here. I have it turned on and you can actually see the lights in here. The lighting inside is much better too. You can actually see what's going on in there without having to add lights and stuff like that. Um, just all around a great upgrade with the camera and the new lighting. And both of these new features give you much better camera monitoring for their AI and the time lapses for sure. And, and I'll show you some time lapses as we're talking here, but it's hands down way better than the P series uh, before this. And of course, with the better camera and lighting, like I was talking about, they can actually incorporate their AI computer vision that will allow it to detect issues like uh, spaghetti and blobbing and, and clogging, along with verifying the build plate against your slicer settings to make sure you have the right one in uh, when you go to print. I don't know how many of you have done this, but I've definitely done this where I left the wrong plate in and then it yells at you and says, hey, wait, this isn't the plate you sliced with. Go change it or, or change your slicer settings. Or it'll just say, is that okay? And you're printing too. But that AI vision definitely helps with catching all of that stuff. And again, it's because the new camera and the new lighting that allows that to happen. And another cool thing that they built into the uh, P2S is adaptive air cooling and heat preserving of the build chamber. Gone are the days of lifting up the top or taking it off or leaving your door open in, in the P1S uh, to print things like PLA or low temp filament like that. Uh, spoiler alert, I never did. I just sent it anyway with the door closed, but you were supposed to do that and, and that was a thing. The P2S will actually just pull the cooler outside air in and actually adapt the inside of the chamber so it doesn't get too hot when you're printing low temp filaments. And if you're printing those higher temp filaments that need a higher chamber temp, they have a flap controlled adaptive airflow system. That's what they call it. What it'll do is it'll actually seal the heat within the chamber and then cycle it around inside using their uh, charcoal filter. So it, it kind of filters it out and just keeps that hot air inside while it's cycling and, and uh, flowing inside of that chamber. That, that actually allows the uh, inside to keep warmer for those hotter temp filaments. It's not actively heated, but it'll definitely keep the chamber warmer than pulling that cold air in. So that's actually pretty cool that this one does it. Um, I, I love that the H2S and the H2D like open the flaps, let the cool air in and out and stuff like that. And it's cool that they incorporated something like that in a lower end model like the P2S. And to top all of that off, it uses the uh, new AMS2 Pro that we saw come out uh, earlier this year with the H2D. Uh, I believe that's when the when this one came out. 
Um, it's a much better multicolor, multi-material system. If you aren't familiar with the uh, AMS2 Pro, it actively can dry your filament, which is great. It can keep it dry, which is awesome. And also, the, my opinion, the coolest, best part about it is the inside where they actually made it so much easier to work on. If you've ever had a little filament piece break off or something like that in the original AMS system, you had to take out the whole inside to get to everything. With the uh, AMS2 Pro, you don't have to do that. You just flip it open, all of your PTFE tubes are right in the top there and it makes it so much easier <laughs> than, than having to take it all apart. So overall, just a much better AMS uh, and it's awesome that it works directly with P2S. Something else I wanna talk about and, it, and, and really it wasn't on my script is the back of this thing. So in the back, and I'm gonna be showing it while I talk here, but they made it so much easier, much like the H2S, um, to plug everything in. If you remember the original X1, X1 Carbon, P1, P1P, the, the AMS um, cable was like upside down and backwards, so you had to fish something in there to get it out. Not to mention the PTFE tube went inside of that buffer, and you couldn't get it out without pushing something inside. That's no longer the case. The uh, buffer tube and the power is right on the back, easy to remove if you need to take this off and, and move it somewhere. Not only that, but they give you a very long or a much longer AMS power cable here. Um, so if you wanted to move this up onto a rack or, or next to the machine or something, you can. It's much longer than they used to be. So thanks Bamboo Lab for doing that. I know you did it in the H2S, uh, H2D as well, but but thanks for bringing it to the uh, P2S. Now, literally, this could be a 30-minute video talking on specs and stuff like that. Uh, listen, it is the same build area as the P1P and the P1S and the X1 and the X1 Carbon. It's 256 by 256 by 256. Oh, yeah. One more thing that changed is the top here has a uh, USB port. So you actually have to use a, like a USB thumb drive in there. No longer does it have the micro SD card slot in the side of the screen. Um, you need a little USB card um, if you want to do time lapses and, and store print stuff like that on your USB drive. So just a heads up. Like I said, we can talk about specs all day though. I think we should see how it actually prints up close. Um, I've had the P2S at home uh, since it came to me and my wife has been using it nonstop for everything you see here and for another video that's coming out a little bit later in the week, but also for her Etsy store and we have almost 200 hours on this printer already. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, a sample of the things that we've printed and, and kind of get them up close with some B-roll and let's take a look. So the first thing I wanna take a look at is this sweet jack-o'-lantern here. It does print in a couple pieces with the base, the top and the stem. Um, I absolutely love how this came out. You put a little tea light inside and uh, once you turn that tea light on, it lights it up like a jack-o'-lantern. Um, if I don't drop it, uh, the top goes on and you can kind of see the little light in there. Um, it came out really good. I, I think that I could have used adaptive layers on this to make it a little smoother in the top. Uh, but honestly, this thing came out really good. It's super smooth. The, uh, the face looks good and just, just a great overall print. The next thing I want to show you is this really cool, which is cauldron. Now I didn't print the top because we're actually using the inside as a, uh, a candy bowl. And I didn't, I thought it would be cooler to see the candy like coming spilling out and kind of things, but uh, we've eaten a lot of the candy, so it's not really spilling out anymore. <laughs> but the bowl, the cauldron itself, it came out so, so clean. Um, I love how this printed, it printed very well. And all the models that I show, I'll have a link um, in the descriptions below. It's all from Maker World. Um, pretty much everything you see here, we found on Maker World and printed for a Halloween video, like I said, that will be coming out later in the week. Um, but the cauldron came out really good. The black looks awesome and just nothing to complain about with that print at all. Some of the other things we did was this uh, witch door topper right here. It's kind of hard to see. I'll try to put it like in the background and I'll, I'll get some B-roll. But basically these sit on anything with a 90 degree angle like a door or a window frame. Um, but it's it's super thin, very fast to print, came out very good. And it, same thing with this, this pumpkin spider web one too. It's hard to see the spider web back there in this lighting, but that's how it looks like that. This one was multicolor with the pumpkin face with the, with the orange, the black. It came out 
super good. And the third one, I actually don't have the physical piece to show you, but I'll show some B-roll of it right now. Uh, it's, it's slime. It basically, it does the same thing as these two do. You sit them on a door frame or a window or something like that, but it looks like you got slimed like from Ghostbusters. She did that one on one of those fun um, holographic plates. So it actually has like a kind of a, a holographic look to it as well. Super cool. All three came out very good. Next, we have all of these tea light candles uh, printed in all different sizes here. They actually are very cool. You hold the tea light in the top, you turn the tea light on and put it in there and it makes it look like it's a candle. Um, so that's really cool. The, the candle tea light holders. We did them all in white because we thought that would be a fun color as far as kind of like classic Halloween candle looking uh, for our decorations, but they came out really good. Um, all the different heights printed at the same time on the same plate, knocked them all out. And again, another great print with no issues on the P2S. Now let's check out these awesome spiderweb coasters that we did. Uh, these come in a little holder. They look like uh, spider webs, if you can see that. And you just pop them out of the little holder and it's a coaster. Throw them down on your table, throw your drink on them and you're good to go. Super cool decoration for Halloween if you're, you're doing some kind of party. And they're super fast because they're so flat, which is really cool. The other thing would be this cute Halloween sign, the happy Halloween sign. It is two colors, but it's only one color change because most of it's orange, then it switches to black and that's it. So easy and fast to print. Surface area came out really good. No weird warping or anything like that. That's a pretty big uh, flat space to print and no issues at all on the happy Halloween sign. These little ghosties, this is like apparently called a bunting. I didn't know that. I, I just called them hanging signs forever, but you kind of, oh, I can't reach far enough here. Um, but they're little ghosties and they put we put them on string and you can hang them up on a wall or across the ceiling or something like that. They are reversible. So they, the same little guy is on the front and the back. Each of these little ghosties has a little face and they're all different um, or, or almost all different. And again, they're reversible, super cute for Halloween. And all these were printed at the same time on one build plate. Um, I'm like a broken record here but it just printed. And that's what we expect this to do is just print. So awesome job, uh, P2S. Another quick multicolor print was this pumpkin uh, door hanging sign. You just wrap it around your door there or put it around your door handle and it hangs there. Uh, black, orange, and green came out really good. That The color changes are good. This thing, this thing is actually super smooth on the top and looks great. So as far as the P2S doing multicolor, definitely does it very well. And I didn't have any issues in, in my testing. I don't want to show everything on here, but you can kind of see some of the other things that I didn't show yet. But after almost 200 hours of printing on the P2S, what do I think? Well, I, I think it's safe to say that it's a much needed upgrade for sure. It's like having a baby H2S, like a smaller H2S. And I really, really do like the H2S. So that's, that's a really cool thing. It does what it's supposed to do. It just prints and gets the jobs done. And that's what I found out on, on the P2S here. Again, it's it's really just like having a baby H2S, maybe minus some of the very advanced features on the H2S. I, I It's hard to say anything negative. I didn't have any issues. And I, I literally expect these things these days to just work. You, you go into the slicer, the profiles are already there. You pick your default profiles. If you want to modify them, great. But the default ones are great. They printed all of this. And you hit print and you expect it to print. And that's what this thing does. It's just a, a good printer with some upgrades that make this way better than its older uh, brothers, the P1S and the P1P. So with that being said, let's talk about the price. The P2S is releasing today for $549 for the machine alone. Or $799 if you want to go with the combo with the AMS2 Pro. I think that is a great price for this machine. Um, it's got more and better features and better tech built in than its, its older uh, siblings. And at the time of filming this, it's the same price as the P1S to get the base model alone and actually $50 cheaper than the P1S if you get it with the AMS2 Pro. Um, I would say that is super competitive uh, for such a good printer. I don't know that if they're going to discontinue or discount the P1S or something like that, and they could when this drops and that's fine. But either way, to make a machine at the same price 
of the original of the P1S is a very good move by Bamboo Lab. So let me know in the comments what you think of the brand new P2S. And if you're gonna grab one, there is a link in the description below that helps the channel at no extra cost to you, but it really does help my channel out. Thanks again, Bamboo Lab, for sending over the P2S. And if you guys haven't seen this video right here, you gotta check that one out next.